Hi everyone! The moment that you all have been waiting for, the moment to start the big tank project is here! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah! But first of all, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Thanks Squarespace! And now let me, let me show you where all this began. This is the old big tank and it has been scrapped for parts for many other projects including the mini tank, the train and, and, and so on. So let me show you why I think this is no good for the next iteration of this project. The, the, probably the, the first the first issue that we can find with this design is that I don't fit inside. This is clearly not big enough and all those and all these ribs inside will make it very difficult for me to fit in. And it might be maybe wide enough, but for sure it is not long enough. Because my intention in this project is to be inside the tank. Amongst other issues with this tank is that the sprockets that I used were too shallow. This, this is skipped on the tracks all the time, which seems to be a feature that solved another issue with the motor drivers. But in this channel we don't fix a mistake with another mistake. We might watch it, but we don't fix mistakes with mistakes. And for, for example, these are the sprockets that I designed for the mini tank and I can tell you that this never skipped a link. Never. In the old big tank, we had these threads in here, which may be fashionable, but not really good on the ground. Assembling this was a nightmare. Doing the two-part design with the pads and the links was a big mistake. It took ages to assemble and, well, they didn't stay on for long. And these caps at the end to keep the pins in Even this improved version in the tank threads of the mini tank reflect that not all the pins were kept inside. I had a, a couple of caps missing. I could, I could only recover one on the beach, so I, I don't want to risk to lose to leave any of these on the beach or break the threads because I, I lose one of these. So this system is, is a no-no. And these vests in here that I used as ESCs for the motors I, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong with them, but this, this, I cannot use them. They stop working randomly and they give me no feedback through the terminal. And I'm pretty sure that if I invest a lot more time on them, I will learn how to use them, but I think I have a better solution. Also, if, if we have steel pins inside the tracks, that, that makes it really prone to rusting and, and not working, I cannot, I cannot even move this pin in here now. So, steel pins, nope. So with all of this that we've learned with all this tanking, where are we going? What's the aim of this project? Well, this is not going to be a war machine. I don't like war machines, I like machines and tanks are cool, but those are for war and war, war is bad. So this is not going to be a war machine, this is not going to be an all-terrain vehicle, because it's pretty difficult to do a huge tank that can fit me inside and drives as to make it indestructible. That's not going to happen, so you will not be seeing this in this build. But I'm still planning on making it fast, so you might be seeing some of this, but much bigger. And talking about bigger, so one thing that you can take for granted is that this thing is going to be bigger in every way. And we are going to change the thread size, these are going to be much bigger. I will change the pin and locking system. We will need a, a, a way to get in and out of the tank, which that's, that's new on the channel. And it will probably be RC, 
but it will mainly be designed to be driven from inside. So some safeties and a lot will be required just in case this thing goes rogue. Rogue 3D printed tank escapes from. It will definitely have more spacers because spacers. It will definitely have a cannon. This one is now a little bit small, isn't it? And I will hopefully be able to put this thing on top of the tank, but that's, that's still not warranted. And of course, I will start the build before I finish the design because the, this spray has already been like a few, a few hundred hours of design in Fusion 360. I've, I've gone back and forth with lots of different variations, taking into account lots of things. And I'm already printing some of the parts because I've already settled on their design. And even if the design is pretty advanced, there is something that I haven't decided yet. What's, what's my stance going to be when I'm in it. This is more or less where the base of the tank is going to be sitting at. So, give or take, this is the space that we have to work. And let me switch lenses because with this one it seems that I'm not going to fit and I'm pretty sure that I do. Well, I just put my phone in there so I can see me if I fit because the camera is in the other side of the workshop. So let's see, let's see how this could be. But one thing that I don't want to be is like sitting upright because then the tank will be too tall and too short. That's that's not really tanky. And even if I'm not going to be basing this design on any existing tank, I want it to be a little bit tanky and a little bit futuristic, a little bit weird, but not tall and short. So the design that we have now could allow me to do something like this, a little bit like Formula One, which is pretty cool. And I have, pl and I have plenty of space inside. So yes, I think I think I'm going to settle for the Formula One style. Maybe maybe I can put my feet down like so. If I do this, I have space in there for stuff, spurs and a lot. Because you never know. This thing this thing is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is settled. A recumbent giant 3D printed tank. Yes! <laughs> this is going to be epic. So please be patient. This parade is going to take a while. Only in 3D printer hours, that's, it's going to be huge. So be patient. I most probably will have to do other videos in between. A few other projects that I have in mind. I like to do a few improvements on the workshop. Improve my woodworking skills. You know. And on this project, I would like to keep statistics about printing time, weight of the parts, and, and some other stuff. And I will put a link on the description to my website where I will be posting all the information related to this project, which brings us to this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Thanks, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. With Squarespace, you can get your own domain, your own website, make your online store, and it's, it's really quick and really easy. And that's exactly what I used more than a year ago. I used Squarespace to build my website and it was a really easy process. Even if you are like me that you are not really into web design, you will find really easy and it's going to be really quick to build your website with Squarespace. So don't forget to check the link on the description to get 10% off of your first domain or your first website. And that's it for this week. I know that this week I didn't make anything per se, but you know that I've been working non-stop on this project for the last, I think, couple of months, and now is the moment where we start. So this is a very good moment to subscribe and click that notification bell if you haven't, because this is going to get really big. Thanks a lot for sharing my videos, Instagram, Twitter, everything helps a lot. Thanks a lot for liking my videos, give it a big thumbs up, and thanks a lot for your comments. I read all of them, even if I don't have time to answer to them. I try. Thanks a lot for your Patreon support. Please consider supporting me on Patreon to keep this madness going. And now please go and make something.
And just for those of you that stay until the end, this is a link of the old thread, and this is a link of the new one. Bye!